Okay, this is an introduction to the topic of finding volumes of solids of revolution, which very much like finding area is really just an application of integration. We'll go ahead and dive right into an example and using this example hopefully lay out some of the ideas that are behind finding volumes and at the very end we'll look at a summary of the method that we're using. So what we're asked to do here is to find the volume of the solid uh, which is obtained obtained by rotating the region bounded by the given curves about the specified line. And we're asked to sketch the region, the solid, and a typical disk. So I'm not going to do any calculus for a little bit here. We'd like to start just by grasping what exactly we're dealing with. So I see that I have this function y equals x squared. Uh, I see I have some boundary lines, the line y equals 0, which is just the x-axis and then a vertical line x equals 2. And then this rotated part is something that's uh, brand new to our discussion. The other parts look similar to what we've seen when we were asked to find areas. So we'll just take each piece here and try to uh, look into what we really have going on. So I'm, I'm going to start by just plotting the y equals x squared, or just parabola function. And I know I don't need to look at more than just this bit here. And let's say that's one, that's two. Humor my sketch. Um, so our other boundary line was this line y equals zero, which is just the x-axis. And then our third boundary line was a vertical line x equals two. All right, so this is just giving us a feel of the region that we're interested in. So it said sketch the region, so we're sketching it. So now it starts talking about sketching the solid, and this is where our discussion moves from a two-dimensional discussion to a three-dimensional discussion. You can see that the bounded region between uh, the three different lines we've graphed would be what I'm shading right here in blue. So ideally, um, we should understand that we're going to be taking this region I'm shading and rotating this region around the x-axis as we're told. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this two-dimensional drawing, redraw it a little quicker here, and show what it looks like to start rotating it. So our x-axis means that our rotation is going to be in that direction. So another quick sketch of the little portion we're interested in, y equals x squared. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take that region and essentially mirror it across the line of rotation, which is our x-axis. So we start getting really a three-dimensional feel, um, in which case, of course, we know we can find volume if it's three-dimensional. So we're really being tasked with finding the volume of this now three-dimensional looking uh, shape. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit the moving from area to volume. But now we have to think about how in the world are we going to find volume uh, using integration. So let's go back real quick and just talk about a few ideas from Calc 1. In Calc 1, we talked about integrating uh, really just a function. And we said that would give back area. So now what we should be thinking about is if integrating something um, from kind of a linear perspective, just the function itself would give back area, then integrating something two-dimensional area should give back something three-dimensional, which would be volume. So if we go back to our sketch here, um, we have this region, and ideally what we want to do is pull out a cross-section and consider what that cross-section looks like. So let's say I choose to focus in on a small region right here. Okay, so if I pull that region out and turn it towards you so that we're looking at it as a cross-section instead, I believe you'd agree that that cross-section looks circular, right? And if I asked you even more about this cross-section, if I asked you about the radius of the cross-section, you would tell me it's dependent upon the function, right? It was the function y equals x squared that determined this line here. So I'm just going to label my little radius here as x squared. Now if we think about finding the area of this, how do we find the area of a circle? 
Well, the area of a circle from the past we knew was pi times the radius squared, which in this case would mean we need to integrate pi times the radius of x squared squared. So that's basically what we're going to be integrating. These are a lot of new ideas, so feel free to pause and kind of make sure they're making sense. This is just an introduction to the topic. But going back again to our discussion here, we're going to be integrating the area of that cross section, which is a circle, and the result will be volume. The limits of integration from the left to the right will be based on the boundaries of our region. So coming back to our region again, um, we really were bounded between an x value of 0 and an x value of 2. So using all of this, let's go ahead and set up the integral that will find for us um, the volume of this region after you feel comfortable with this part. All right, so with some clear space, let's go ahead and, and dive into the calculus part. What we're saying in general is that the volume of a solid of revolution can be found by integrating from the left to the right pi times the radius squared if we're integrating with respect to x. You guys all know full well, of course, we can change that up and integrate with respect to y. And then those limits of integration that I have listed here as a and b would just change to be limits of integration. Um, typically, we call it from c to d. So that would change from um, left to right to be um, d bottom to top instead. OK, so that's our idea in general. And if we now begin applying the specific values in this example, from our sketch, the lower limit of integration was 0, and the upper limit of integration was 2. That's again because our parabola was bounded, and we were really focused on that region between x equals 0 and x equals 2. Now, um, we have multiplied by pi, since that's part of the area of a circle. And then the radius, which we said is really just defined by the function itself, which was x squared. And that radius just needs to be squared. So the actual integration is not going to be that bad. Um, I think the conceptual understanding is where more time is spent at first. So we have our little parabola shape being rotated about the x-axis. And we're about to sum up an infinite number of areas of disks and say that that will, in turn, give us the exact volume of this solid. So we'll just integrate here. Remember, we can pull out pi as a constant. Uh, so we're really just integrating x squared, squared, which is x to the fourth. So power rule says we need to increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and evaluate from 0 to 2. So plugging in the upper limit of integration, I'll have 2 to the power of 5. And plugging in the lower limit of integration, you guys can see that plugging in 0 would just zero out that whole term. So pi times 2 to the fifth over 5, or sounds like 32 pi over 5 cubic units would be the volume of the region that we're interested in. So 32 pi over 5 cubic units. And that is how we can find volume. This is just one of the many methods we'll look at in Calc 2. Um, this is basically called the disk method. We talked a little bit about pulling a cross section out of our solid and viewing that as a circular disk. So to summarize what we've seen so far, this is not the best screenshot, so please take a look at the summary sheet. But we're basically saying that we can integrate the area of a circle, and that will give back the volume of a solid. If we were to turn that circle so that it was a cross section um, this direction, we would just be integrating with respect to y. So that's a small introduction, much more to come, but that should be enough to try out some practice.